Tonight we are going to tell the story of a woman who disappears into thin air. By the way, have you noticed that thin air seems to be the type of air most conducive to disappearances? There certainly is a fact well worth knowing. Now, in case you seem to recognize parts of this story, don't be alarmed. It is familiar because it is a classic of its kind. Many, many people have borrowed this legend quite profitably too. Two novels have been written about it and it has been made into a motion picture called The Lady Vanishes, once by no less a personage than uh, Alfred Hitchcock. It was also related by Alexander Woolcott in his book, While Rome Burns. Here, following our sponsor's all too brief message, is our version of that famous old tale. Now I had better get out of the way to enable you to see better. May I have a bit of thin air, please? I can't understand why I feel so tired. I was perfectly well on the boat. Five minutes more, Mother, and you can rest. Bonsoir, mesdames. Vous avez retenu une chambre? I'm afraid we don't speak French. Do you? Does anyone here speak English? Oh, forgive me, mademoiselle. I was asking whether you had reserved rooms. We are extremely busy at this particular time. Oh, yes, we, we reserved by cable six weeks ago from India. Winthrop. Winthrop. Ah, je suis désolé, mademoiselle, mais nous n'avons... Oh, forgive me. I'm afraid we can only give you one room in the stead of the two that you have requested in your cable. You see, Paris is so crowded with the visitors who've come to see our great world exposition. However, yes, we can... Yes, yes, thank you. That'll do nicely. Please. Chasseur, Madame et Mademoiselle Winthrop for 342. Voici, Madame. It's a lovely room. And look, Mother, an all-new clock, almost exactly like ours at home. And those wonderful velvet curtains. And that old-fashioned four-poster. Yes, dear. It's a lovely room. You are tired, aren't you, dear? Just rest over here in this chair while I turn the bed down. Allow me, mademoiselle. Thank you. Now, darling, we'll have you in bed in a moment. Later, dear. I'll undress later. Thank you for coming so quickly. Oh, I'm right here in the hotel for the convenience of the guests. But tell me, when did your mother first complain of feeling tired? It was on the boat train to Paris. We thought perhaps it was the heat. And you say you have come from India? Yes, we stopped to see the exposition on our way home. Now, with mother feeling so ill, I almost wish we'd gone straight to England instead. Uh, pardon me. Just a little fever. Doctor? Doctor? We have a small problem. The medicine which I require must be prepared. 
and I'm afraid you will not find the chemist shop open so late as night. Therefore, it is necessary to procure the necessities somewhere else. Now, my wife, she is, uh, she is licensed by law to dispense the medicine. So you will take a message to her, mademoiselle, and bring the medicine back here to me. I'm sorry, but I cannot leave the hotel right now. So you will take a fiaca. No. Madame is right. Not a fiaca for so young a girl, but I have it. I shall send you in my own carriage. The driver knows the way. He will bring you there and back safely. Couldn't you send a messenger? Oh, no, madame. A messenger cannot be trusted with all the city on fate. I'm sorry that we do not have telephone facilities in our home. Otherwise, my wife would be enchanted to bring you the medicine back here. I'll be back soon, mother. You mustn't worry. I will make certain that madame is well taken care of while you are gone. Au revoir. Do you mind waiting here, mademoiselle, while I get all the medicine? It will take a little time. So please, have patience. Thank you. I regret, mademoiselle, the long delay. But you see, the medicine must be prepared with great care. Yes, yes. Thank you. Merci. Goodbye. I must hurry back to my mother. It's taken so long. It's nearly midnight. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. May I have my key, please, number 342? Qui désirez-vous voir, mademoiselle? I'm afraid you've forgotten. I don't speak French. Pardon? Oh, whom does mademoiselle wish to see? I, I want the key, the key to my room. But uh, the name, please. Winthrop, Miss Winthrop. I'm here with my mother. Winthrop? Uh, Winthrop, I'm sorry, mademoiselle. Uh, a thousand pardons, but I do not... Uh... Oh, perhaps Mademoiselle has mistaken it come to the wrong hotel. Oh, good heavens. But this is the right hotel. Well, I remember it. I know you. Don't you remember? We asked for two rooms and you only had one. Well, I signed that register right there. I'm sorry, Mademoiselle, but see for yourself. Number 342. Monsieur Duchesne, he has been with us for some days. The city is crowded with visitors. There is much confusion. You have merely mistaken the identity of your hotel. It happens frequently, mademoiselle. I have not mistaken the hotel. I remember you. I know my room number. My mother's up there now. She's very ill and I must go to her. Mademoiselle. I cannot permit you. Monsieur Duchesne retired early. He must not be disturbed. I don't believe you. I know she's there. Please, mademoiselle. Why, that porter over there. He carried up our bags. Chasseur? Oui, monsieur? Uh, this young lady wishes to know if you remember her. Mademoiselle desire savoir si vous vous souvenez d'elle. Mais non, I've never seen her before. Oh, but you have. You carried up our bags just this evening. No, mademoiselle. The doctor. He sent me for this medicine. He'll tell you. He's probably with my mother this minute. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but the doctor is not here. He will not be back until morning. I can't believe he sent me for medicine and then go away before I came back with it. Mademoiselle, I beg of you. Think. It is impossible that you are in the right hotel. The maid. Where's the maid? She'll tell you. She'll remember I know. Demandez à la femme de chambre du 342 de descendre, voulez-vous? Tout de suite, monsieur. 
Mademoiselle, we will be glad to provide you with a room for the night. Don't you think you should wait until morning and then perhaps try to remember from which hotel you have wandered? Now, the lateness of the hour does I not... I certainly do not. I must find my mother. She's ill. It's not a thing to be put off until morning. Oh, good evening. Do you remember in room 342 when you took my mother's hat and asked if there was anything else that you... 342? Uh, there is a gentleman in 342, a uh, Monsieur Duchesne. Don't you remember me? My mother was ill. I am sorry, Mademoiselle. <laughs> Mademoiselle, may I conduct you to a room? There you may compose yourself and perhaps in the morning you may recollect. What am I going to do? Where is my mother? She will no doubt find you, Mademoiselle. Meanwhile, number 254 is a very nice room. You think I can go to bed not knowing what's become of my mother? Mademoiselle must realize that her memory is at fault. However, if you wish to go and inquire at other hotels... But this is the hotel. Perhaps you're right. I'm very tired. I should go to bed and think. There must be some explanation. Certainly, mademoiselle. Of course there is. When you are rested, you will consider and reveal the truth to yourself. After you, mademoiselle. Now, mademoiselle, you should go to bed immediately. You will feel much more restored in the morning. Perhaps. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. You'd better get some rest now. Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night. What's happened? What can have happened? Where's my mother? I know it's the right hotel. I remember all of those people. Oh, but that doctor. I did sign the register. Oh, there has to be an explanation. I'm not going out of my mind. Oh, no, certainly not, Miss Winthrop. As you say, there must be an explanation. I clearly remember Perhaps. all those people who now choose to deny they ever saw me before. Oh, I'm afraid. I must have help. The embassy will help you, of course. Yes, I uh, think the best thing to do is to get in touch with your relatives in England and well, arrange... I won't leave Paris without my mother. My dear Miss Winthrop, what possible reason could the people at the Madeleine Hotel have for such a conspiracy? I should very much like to know that too, Sir Everett. Yes, uh, you see. <laughs> Um, of course, you were quite right to call me in, Farnham, but I think, uh, I think you can handle the situation yourself, hmm? Yes. You're in good hands, Miss Winthrop. Mr. Farnham, uh, Mr. Farnham will assist you in every way possible, and, uh, good day. He thinks I'm insane. Mr. Farnham, do you believe a single thing I've told you? I'm going to believe everything I possibly can, Miss Winthrop. Now, let's begin at the beginning. Oh, Meadows, please put through a trunk called a Marseille and inquire whether a Mrs. Herbert Winthrop and a Miss Diana Winthrop arrived on the Lafayette on August the 18th and took the boat train to Paris. Yes, sir. You don't even believe she was with me. Certainly I believe she was with you. But we're going to prove it. Now, don't you think it would be wise to have one of your relatives in England come over here to help you? There isn't anyone but Aunt Minerva. She's 75 and deaf. By all means, send for her. I see. You are alone, aren't you? My mother's alone, too. She's ill, maybe very ill, and she's disappeared. He hasn't even got the medicine he sent me for. Where did he send you for it? Would you know how to get there again? No, I'm afraid not. A closed carriage took me there and brought me back. Is this the medicine? Let's unwrap it. Perhaps the label will say where it came from. Miss Winthrop. This isn't medicine. This is a small bottle of Vitel water. You could have... It could have been bought anywhere. But 
But that's what she gave me, the doctor's wife. She made me wait nearly two hours for it. Why? Uh, sir, the steamship company says that Mrs. Winthrop and Miss Diana Winthrop arrived in Marseille on the 18th and were booked through to Paris on the boat train. Thank you, Meadows. Yes. Now, won't you come to the hotel and talk to these people? Of course, right away. What else can we say, monsieur? We do not recognize that young lady. Nobody here, not the porter, not the maid. It is evident that mademoiselle is suffering from delusions. You do know where she is, you do. Monsieur, may I suggest that you seek competent medical aid for Miss Winthrop? Mr. Farnham, you don't think that I... Everybody seems to think I... Good day, gentlemen, and thank you. I suspect you haven't had any breakfast. Come along. She kept me waiting and waiting until finally I remember the clock striking 12. I've been there for... The telephone. The doctor, the first doctor, told me he had no telephone. That was why I had to take a note, because he couldn't communicate with his wife. And then when I was leaving, the telephone rang. The doctor's wife was at the door with me, and it rang and rang. She shut the door as quickly as she could, but I could still hear it. That's all very interesting, but you see, you were the only person who heard it. I don't see how we can use it. Oh. I know. Why didn't I think of it before? I know exactly how that room, number 342, looks. I've never been to Paris before. I couldn't possibly know what it looks like, could I? If I'd never seen it, if Monsieur Duchesne had been in it for several days. That's quite true. Tell me exactly how that room was. It had green damask drapes, rose pattern wallpaper, an ormolu clock, a sofa in grey, a grey rug, a little oval satin wood table, and a big four-poster bed. I think that's all I can remember. Oh, yes, a lamp. Come along. Let's have a look at that room. They won't let us see it. They wouldn't let me in last night. They will today. Voici, mademoiselle. Clock and everything's all different. The best thing for you to do is to get to London where you can rest and leave us to make inquiries into the disappearance of your mother. It's no good staying here and torturing yourself. Very well. The embassy will make all the arrangements and I'll get you tickets for tomorrow's boat. And we'll take your room in some quiet hotel for tonight. I'm sure you don't want to stay here. Never want to see the place again. Just a minute, I'll ask the clerk. The clerk says the Marie Antoinette's a nice quiet hotel. I've taken a room for you there. Painting the hotel. Oh, yes, sprucing it up for the exposition, very likely. Change my mind. I want to stay here. Oh, no, surely not. You'd much better... I'm sorry, but I do. Now, wait. I've changed my mind. I'd like to stay here tonight. Here, mademoiselle? Yes, here. But I... Certainement, if you think that I get... Miss Winthrop, please. Is there any reason why I can't stay here? Oh, no. None at all. Uh... I want room 342. Oh, no, it... It's reserved. It's... It's taken. However, I have one equally pleasant for mademoiselle. Is it as large? Oh, yes, uh, larger, perhaps. In that case, you can give it to whoever is reserved room 342. Oh, no. Impossible. Uh, I... Sure, they didn't write and ask to reserve room 342. They merely asked for a large room. In that case, I can't see why I can't have room 342. Is there any reason why she shouldn't have it? Why, it, it's irregular. Most irregular. The, the rooms have been assigned. I won't keep thinking it's the same room if I'm in it and can see that it isn't. We don't insist, of course, but Miss Winthrop has had a frightful experience, and if it would comfort her to stay in the same room, I... I cannot see why you should object. Monsieur, it is a matter of indifference to me, I assure you. 
However, it is quite expensive. Oh, is it very expensive? Well, perhaps I'd better not. Could I just look at it? Maybe I'm being foolish, but I must be sure. Very well. I don't know how long I shall be here. Look! Mademoiselle! There's the old paper. That's the pattern I described to you. They've changed this room, repapered it. Mademoiselle, this is ridiculous. Pay no attention, monsieur. Oh, I knew it. it. Even smells new. Can you smell the wallpaper paste, Mr. Farnham? Feel the wall. It's cool. It's not even dry yet. Where is she? What have you done with my mother? What's taking so long? How could she have died so quickly? Oh, why won't they tell me anything? I'll try to hold on, Diana. I don't know what it's all about either. They won't talk to anybody but Sir Everett. He'll be here in a moment, just a moment. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Miss Winthrop. Uh, sit down. But this is a very uh, singular, very difficult. What is it, Sir Everett? Oh, tell me, please. Miss Winthrop, let me say at first that we, the Embassy, would never for a moment have countenanced this, never. But we've been presented with a fait accompli. There's nothing we can do about it. About what? About what? The doctor saw at once that your mother was very ill. Very ill indeed. He sent you on this wild goose chase to give himself time to make arrangements for her to be transferred elsewhere, secretly. Arrangements? Why did they have to be secret? I know it's hard for you, my dear. Very hard. I... I'm trying to explain the best way I can. You see, before you got back to your hotel, your mother had already died. But how could she? She was perfectly well in the afternoon. I know, I know. You must understand we don't condone their actions, not for a moment, but one can see why they did what they did. They've spent millions on their exposition. The city's full of visitors. The hotels are full of guests. They... Why did they all lie, the maid, the porter? Why did they want to pretend she'd never come to Paris, to obliterate her? They were only obeying their orders. As soon as the doctor had reported your mother's case to the authorities, the French government stepped in quickly and gave everyone explicit orders. Government? Why, my mother hadn't done anything wrong. Where is she? I want to take her home to England. No, my dear. No, I... I'm afraid that isn't possible. You see, your mother died of plague, the bubonic plague. Oh, I'm uh, glad to see so many of you are still with us. There was a disturbing suggestion at the very close of our story, which I wish to clear up at once. You will be relieved to hear that Diana and Basil's story ended happily. They did not get married. And now for that part of the program you have all been waiting for, after which I'll be back. And that completes our offering for tonight. However, I am not giving up. Next week, I plan to stage a comeback and shall present another in our series of situation tragedies. Good night. Oh, uh, incidentally, uh, I thought the little leading lady was rather good, didn't you? <laughs>